Welcome to today's video where we will be diving into the DNS high availability with secondary DNS. If you are running a business or managing a network infrastructure, ensuring that your DNS services are always available is very critical. In this tutorial, we will explain why DNS high availability matters, how secondary DNS can help and show you how to implement it. My name is Navneet Kumar and I am a Microsoft Certified Trainer. The learning objectives of this video are what is DNS and why is high availability important? What is secondary DNS? Benefits of using the secondary DNS for high availability? How does secondary DNS work? Real world use cases for secondary DNS? Finally, a demonstration on implementing a secondary DNS. First, let's quickly refresh on what is DNS. The domain name system translates the human readable domain names like the example.com into the IP addresses that computers use to communicate with each other. It is essential part of how the internet works and any downtime or failure to your DNS server can cause the website, emails or the services can become unreachable. This works as a phone book on your mobile phone that translates your friends or relatives numbers with their name. This is where DNS high availability is important because if this service is unavailable that name resolution can hamper the services. High availability ensures that your DNS service remains operational even if one server fails. In a high availability setup there is no single point of failure. If the primary DNS server goes down, the secondary DNS server takes over seamlessly to ensure the continuous access to your network resources. Now let's talk about the secondary DNS. Secondary DNS, also known as slave DNS server, is a copy of the primary DNS server. It holds a replica of the zone data. The primary DNS server, which is known as a master server, is where the DNS records are initially created and maintained. The secondary DNS server periodically pulls the records from the primary server to stay up to date. This ensures that if the primary server becomes unavailable, the secondary can handle the DNS queries without disruption. This zone transfer from the primary or master DNS server to the secondary is done through all zone transfer known as AXFR or incremental zone transfer IXFR. So why should you implement the secondary DNS? The benefits that we have discussed. Now let's talk about further more benefits of secondary DNS. Number one is redundancy. Secondary DNS adds the redundancy to your DNS infrastructure. If the primary server fails, the secondary server can still resolve the DNS queries. Load balancing, secondary DNS can help distributing the load between the servers as well. It can ensure the better performance and faster response time for DNS queries. It can improve the reliability. With multiple DNS servers available, your network DNS service is more reliable, reducing the chances of a single point of failure. Geographical distribution, by placing the secondary DNS server in different geographical location, you can improve the response time for users globally and you can provide the fault tolerance in case of regional outages. Let's talk about how the secondary DNS server works. When you configure the secondary DNS, the secondary DNS server periodically pulls the zone updates from the master server. This process is called zone transfer. The primary DNS server is the authoritative source for the DNS records and the secondary DNS server simply holds a copy. Also note that secondary DNS server also act as an authoritative source responding to the DNS queries in the same way as the primary server would. The real world use cases for secondary DNS servers are enterprise networks, Large organizations need 24 into 7 uptime for their services. Disaster recovery, secondary DNS provides the failover mechanism in case the primary DNS server goes down due to any hardware failure, DDoS attacks 
or maintenances. Content Delivery Network for caching the content we use the CDN. CDN distributes the secondary DNS uh, servers across the globe to ensure fast and reliable DNS resolutions. Let's look into this demonstration how to set up a secondary DNS server to transfer the zone from primary to secondary and make it high available solution. In this demonstration, we will see how to set up a secondary DNS server. If I take you to the server manager and show you the DNS configuration in this network environment, here I have cltc1.contoso.com. Contoso.com is the fictional domain name used in this lab environment. We have a forward lookup zone to resolve the names into the IP addresses. This zone is a primary DNS zone that is contoso.com and these are the records in this DNS server. This is the name server or authoritative server for the contoso.com DNS zone. If you look at this record here, 172.16.10.12 is the IP address of the Seattle server one that I will set up as a secondary DNS. Right now, I have only one DNS server in this environment, which is Seattle DC one. If I do the NS lookup to see the name resolution that which server is performing the name resolution, I will look for NS lookup for contoso.com domain. The request will go to the DNS server and will return the IP address for contoso.com domain and the server which is authoritative for this has responded with 172.16.10.10 IP address. That is my Seattle DC1 machine. You can see this network interface on this machine is configured with one DNS which is which is preferred DNS server and in case of the outage of this preferred DNS server the whole infrastructure will stand still. In this case, we need to look for the high availability for this environment. For that, I need to install the DNS on a second server. This server will be Seattle server onecontosocom DNS server is the role service that I want to install. I will click next and install this role service. This will take few seconds to minutes to install this DNS role. I will pause and resume the video for this installation to complete. Now that we have seen the installation of DNS, let us connect to that secondary DNS server using connect to DNS. And uh, from this DNS management console, I will connect to that Seattle server one, either with the IP address or with the name of that server. The Seattle server one is connected, but it does not hold anything in its database. If you look at the forward lookup, reverse lookup zones, there is nothing on this server. Only the binaries are installed so far. I will right click and create a forward lookup zone for name resolution, but this will be a secondary DNS zone instead of primary. We have a concept of step zone to hold the partial records for the other domain names. Here in the secondary zone, I will have to define the zone name, which is contoso.com. I need to provide the IP address of my master DNS server, which is Seattle DC1. That IP address is 172.16.10.10 and I will hit enter. This will not resolve into this. Ignore this validation error that has come up over here. And uh, here now I go to this contoso.com DNS zone that is created. The master DNS server is specified, but until and unless I configure the master DNS server to transfer the zone, the zone will not be transferred for security reasons. For that, I will have to go to the properties and I show you the name servers currently. There is only one name server that is Seattle DC1. I can add more name servers like Seattle server one here. But in the zone transfer tab, you will see there are three options. To any server, which is less secure method, only to the servers listed in this name server tab, or I can specify a server in this, uh, in this box directly here to this server that transfer this DNS zone to this target DNS server or secondary DNS server. In my case, as a best practice, I'm going with the name servers list and adding that second server as the name server over here. That is Seattle server one and I will provide the IP address of that Seattle server one. I can get this uh, 
done through a FQDN, fully qualified domain name, which will be clserver1.contoso.com. I can do that later as well. I can resolve this as of now over here. The DNS will resolve. As you see, this is looking a little bit odd over here, CRL Server 1. So either I click on that resolve to resolve this name or I put the fully qualified domain name of this host that is the seattleserver1.contoso.com. The IP address is 17.16.10.12. I have configured the zone transfer for that. I will say yes to okay delete that Seattle Server 1 record that, that was there. So that record was actually created for this. Now I will click OK. This is uh, the list for the zone transfer on the master server where we can specify that to whom it will be transferred. We also can uh, configure this zone transfer to the particular name servers that are here. I just want to show you that to reconfirm that these, uh, this secondary server is part of it. Now I can go to all task in the secondary DNS zone and transfer from the master. I can refresh this console. It can take some time. Sometimes you need to close this console and relaunch the console. So I go to the tools and open up this DNS management console once again. We'll expand this forward lookup zone, contoso.com. It is still not transferred. I can uh, transfer from the master once again and can refresh this server or this console. Well, once you are done with that, you see the zone is transferred contoso.com and all the records from the primary server has been transferred to the uh, the zone has been transferred to the secondary dns here we see contoso.com i will create a record for testing that the zone transfer is taking place for an instance www.contoso.com and the ip address is 17.16.10. Uh, for an instance 100 in this case I will add this host record in the DNS. I'm not creating any pointer record because I don't have reverse lookup zones for this. And that's it. Now, if I go to the second server to check it, I refresh this console. So it is created on the primary DNS and the secondary DNS server may not have this record immediately available. In fact, you can um, transfer it again manually or on demand like transfer from master button was there. And if you look at the NS lookup for this dub dub dub, so the response must be coming from the preferred DNS because the client will give the preference to the first server, which is Seattle DC one with uh, 17.16.10.10 uh, record. And uh, you see the record uh, is retrieved. Uh, the name server can resolve the query because it was a preferred DNS server. Now, because we have high availability configured, we can configure our client with secondary DNS or alternate DNS server, which is 172.16.10.12. Here we go and click OK. Close and this is done. Now, if I go to the DNS and I want to check this record once again here, it may not come up immediately. In fact, I have the option on the master server I can configure to notify the secondary as soon as there are changes available. And for that, I launch the DNS management console once again. Forward lookup zone, contoso.com. This record is not there. I can right click and transfer from master, but this is actually for the initial stage. It is not like that you will be regularly doing this job again and again to get the updated records to the secondary server. What you can do is you can configure your primary server to notify about the changes to the secondary server. And for that, you can go to the primary DNS server. This is serial DC one forward lookup zone. This is the contoso.com DNS zone primary DNS zone. You can go to the properties of it. And in the zone transfer, there was an option to notify. So only the name servers that is fine. I can notify the changes to the secondary that there are some changes done to the records here. That secondary server or slave server is 172.16.10.12. So this primary DNS server will automatically notify the secondary servers when the zone changes. Then apply and click OK. So this notify has been set. And here we go. So authoritative name servers for a DNS zone will automatically notify the secondary servers that, hey, there are changes. You can come and pull those changes. 
and this is where you see that it has immediately pulled those changes because the second